we're watching Army of Darkness. And this is one of the worst movies ever made. <laughs> Let's all make fun of this movie. When he says, my, my name is Ash and I am a slave. Is that a reference to something? Is that like the opening line of something famous? Not I always thought I it was. Of. And I've never looked it up because it's no. such an odd line. Well, you'll notice uh, here the housewares department, like the sign placement and everything looks different than it does at the end of the film because this was a part of the original filming and the ending was a reshoot. And that was Bridget Fonda for some reason. She nope. wanted to be in an Evil Dead. I think she just, yeah, she's a fan. Um, but I was going to say it makes sense if it was like Holly Hunter or something because there was a period of time when like Sam Raimi and the Coen brothers and like Holly Hunter all lived in a house together. <laughs> like when they were all starting out in Hollywood. <laughs> When he cuts his hand off, it's a, a reshoot because they didn't want it to be as bloody. Yeah, that's one thing I, I I noticed watching this movie is that it has an R rating. It shouldn't. It, they tr- made it with the intention of it being PG-13, but for whatever reason, the ratings board just kept coming back with an R. Oh, really? And that, well, I th- can think of one particular scene that made it, makes it R. He's Because he says fuck once. You can say fuck he, once in a PG-13. Yes. Yeah. He's like, get the fuck out of my way when, he, <laughs> um, when he's coming back with the book. Yeah. I would, I would, I would venture to guess it's the the fountain of human blood that get, gives it the R rating. The the fountain of Kool Aid, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen Evil Dead too. This is one of the most bizarre series of movies ever made, as far as none of them being similar in any way tonally. And here you have Arthur and uh, Sheila, who are like the only people that treat this movie seriously. Mm-hmm. The rest of the movie is just a gigantic joke. <laughs> <laughs> children just beating him up. I don't know why some of this stuff is just so funny. I think it's just performance. This is... This ah, is, cut it out! Ah, as far as a comedic performance goes, this is my favorite Bruce yeah. Campbell performance. Yeah. As far as a physical performance, probably Evil Dead 2, when he's doing all the... When his hand's possessed and he's, you know, flipping himself over in the kitchen and everything. But as far as just a straight... I mean, this is what kind of cemented the Bruce Campbell persona, mm-hmm. the, the sort of cocky but also incredibly dumb, which is another interesting thing about this series and that each iteration, Ash just gets dumber. <laughs> the first, <laughs> first movie is like a college guy. Second movie yeah. is a little silly. And then this is like nonsense. This movie's a mess. It's terrible. <laughs> I told you when this started, this is the worst movie. It's true. Oh my God. There's so many mistakes. Yeah. And bad things. Well, that's, in this that's movie. part of the, I mean, it's kind of like uh, Martin Scorsese with his editing where it's like, he's yeah. not concerned about continuity. He's just concerned about the flow of the scene. Yeah. yeah. And Sam Raimi is, is just definitely doesn't care about continuity or little minor errors. It's all about just what, what works for the gag. Whoop. See now like this, if you watch this as a standalone movie, that opening recap that tries to set everything up does not explain this, yeah. the chainsaw arm at all. Yeah, yeah. Look at that great shot through the middle of the spikes. Yeah, is this is some kind of Indiana Jones homage. He does the belt whip thing. It's pointless. Like why just, doesn't he just grab the he could chain? Tra- it makes it slightly more exciting and action It adds tension, the belt could break, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. I don't, yeah, I don't know if it was an intentional influence or not. This feels more, that's the weird thing about this movie. It's like this big adventure, you know, time travel swashbuckling thing. And then Sam Raimi's just like, but then the lead will be Bruce Campbell. <laughs> well, that's, that's your gimmick. The that's... whole the whole movie's a joke, <laughs> which is, again, why it's weird that, like, you kind of have to be in on the joke to get the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, did either of you see this in the theater? I did. You did? Oh, yeah. okay. No, I, um, a friend of mine was into Evil Dead. Oh, okay. And Evil Dead 2. I think I saw this at the Dollar Show. <laughs> <laughs> I love when Sam Raimi does these things, though, where there's like a whole sequence where every shot is kind of done in this the one particular, like this one, every mm-hmm. shot has that. It's not like crazy Michael Bay shaky cam. No. It's following the shot. It's just jittery. Until Vibration. the sequence, until the yeah, until the sequence is done. It's like Style. the scene has too much energy, and so the camera. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and it, it, they indicate here it could crush a, a goblet, <laughs> but then he never really uses it for its crushing powers. No, this man is an engineering genius. Why does he work at S Mart? <laughs> is he smart? <laughs> he he's smart when the movie needs him to be. He built that arm. <laughs> He has a chemistry book that teaches him how to make gunpowder. That's true, yeah. But there's a line in this scene. I want to talk about this scene um, where he's like, he's like, you'll never understand alloys and compositions and uh, things with molecular yeah, structures. Like he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. But I love this scene. It's the scene where they ha- they have their bond. They have a little fight. You know, they make up. Yeah. But it's so like shortened and almost <laughs> self-aware. Oh, yeah. 
be, uh, of, well, they of don't the, make up. He just walks up to her and they start kissing. Exactly. <laughs> and then he says, uh, give me some sugar. Give me some sugar, baby. It's bordering on like a naked gun scene. <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely no reason. Now she's like smitten. Yeah. <laughs> His fiance died yesterday. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> See, my favorite stuff in Evil Dead 2 is when he's by himself and just going crazy in the cabin. I think these scenes just kind of waste the premise. Mm. Yes, I agree with Rich. That's fair. Um, this is, And then this feels like the second act needed Evil Dead stuff. Famous Ooh. Evil Dead point of view shots. Yeah, yeah, and then the banging on the door and, all, and then I hate the little ashes. <laughs> um, I like the idea behind them, but the execution of execution it is. is yeah. I openly hate that whole sequence of the movie. Oh my yeah. God. I do. Too silly? Far? Too wrong for this movie, mm. for what this movie should be. Yeah, his quest needed a couple scenes with him going to things you've seen in medieval movies. He needed a right? posse with him. Of uh, Robin and else. his yeah. merry men, kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've got to go to this village. Maybe all and, these little uh, obstacles he has to face along right. the way. Well, sure. Ash in a Lord of the Rings movie. Yeah, like, what would you do, Rich? What, what, I, I, what's, I, what's a trope from like a uh, like a? He's got a battle a night, uh, a jousting tournament. You really put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> oh, ooh, some kind of wizard asking him riddles. Okay, a, ri- a guy mm-hmm. at a bridge asking like, what's in um uh, 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 the fucking Monty Python movie? Right? Yeah. Oh yeah, there's the guy who gets. All of his limbs cut off, or he yeah. has to, he's guarding the bridge, or whatever. Right. Yes. He needs. He needs the three. Uh, or Deathstalker two when Deathstalker has to get in a wrestling match mm. with the woman from Glow. There you go. He ends up on the gallows, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, let's see. What else could we do? <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. You're right. Generally speaking, the interaction with like when he's yelling at all the people and telling them what what the shotgun right. type is. That's fun stuff. This uh, this Looney Tunes stuff. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this this sort of seems like they wanted to recreate some of this oh, yeah. weird stuff. I, from... I get. I understand why they'd want to do yeah. that because Evil Dead Two is arguably the best movie ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and yet we're here doing the commentary for Army of Darkness Woo! instead. The effects in this movie are not good, <laughs> but, but that's not the point. I think it could be better. Rich and I just hate the windmill. (laughs) Everything to do with it. Small portion of the movie. Great, great first act and a great last act. You know, the Necronomicon would be a fun replica prop. You know, people send us weird crap all the time. If you want to send us something weird and artsy, send us a fucking Necronomicon. (laughs) I've seen the real thing in real life. Oh, oh my God. (laughs) Did I ever tell my my, my Tom... uh, Tom uh, Sullivan? Tom Sullivan's story I don't in any of our think so. programmings. I got to tell him a story <laughs> in the Tom Sullivan story. <laughs> I just bought a new camera. It was a Canon Digital Rebel. I was, I was taking pictures of everything. I've lost all these photos, by the way. That's unfortunate. Because we walked around and we took pictures with everybody. Stars of Dawn of the Dead. Stuart Gordon was there. The who's who of horror movies was there. And Tom Sullivan, the artist who created all the drawings in the Evil Dead book. He does his own original art. And I just I took pictures of everything. I took pictures of all of his stuff and how it was laid out. At one point... He starts like our table was just a little bit away from his, and he starts like freaking out. And we're like, "What's what's wrong with him?" You know. Turns out that he was he was having pan- a panic attack because someone had stolen one of the pages from the Evil Dead book, and it was the page with the skull. That's the most iconic one. The most iconic one, and because he, he had them all laid out on this table yeah. and, um, for people to look at, um, and then the, like the police show up. Because he called the cops. Then um, I'm like, what's going on with Tom Sullivan? And they're like, he called the cops. Someone stole a page from the Necronomicon. And he's like, he's like, ah. And I, and I was like, I just took pictures of it. And so w- I took my camera and I used the AV outs and I plugged it into a TV that, that we had at our table. And I start cycling through all my pictures. And Tom uh-huh. Sullivan comes over and the cops are there. And they're like, what page was it? And and he's watching. Tom Sullivan's watching, and he's he's like, uh, it's that one. That's the missing page, and it was the skull page. And the cops like, so a page with the skull on it got <laughs> stolen. And so the cop takes out his like his notepad, and he starts drawing what it looks like on his notepad. <laughs> he's like, like just for their own records <laughs> of what was stolen. And I'm like, okay, the artist who drew the skull is right there. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> but the cop is drawing the skull on his cop pad. It was very like weird. And then um, I start cycling through and I have a wider shot of how all the pictures are arranged. And then he goes over and he's, he goes, wait a minute. And he runs back to his table and he just finds it underneath a different thing. He's like, I moved it under here. Oh my God. And then all, and then all the police just go, oh. <laughs> we could have been solving real crimes and then they left. <laughs> Like you, you solved the mystery, and then everyone was like, "You, you're oh, like a detective." Mentor. Yeah, yeah. They're like you, and so uh, Tom Sullivan, he he grabbed a like a print of something and he signed it on the bottom. He said, "You rock, Tom Sullivan," and he gave it to me. He should have given you the actual page from the book. Me, yes, you earned it. I love how he talks to them like in modern day slang. He just doesn't care. So well, like at the beginning when he says like your shoelace is untied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he's too stupid to realize they won't know what he's talking about. Uh, it may be. Yeah, it's it's part of his arrogance. Part of the charm, you know? Yeah. yeah. What are you gonna do? Run home to your mama and cry. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ted Raimi again. <laughs> he's a different character. You can count on my steel. This was an impression I used to always do. <laughs> with with the eyebrow raise. You can I count was... on my steel. You can count on my steel. <laughs> like this score is great. It's 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 almost too good for this movie. This the, is the score March you would have for theme. an actual like swashbuckling yeah, adventure yeah, movie. Yeah. I may be bad, but I feel This is this good. is a pretty cringy line. I it mean is. I know the movie's got it lots is. of corny stuff, but <laughs> this line in particular always bugged me. Uh, and and I'm Beth Davids here is like a like a real actress mm-hmm. <laughs> making her say the stupid crap. <laughs> I like that little bit where he scooches the the, the candle over. And this this training sequence this is, so is, is also like a joke. <laughs> like he teaches them that one move, yeah. and then they use it later. And then they use it. <laughs> like grown men who are part of an army don't know ha who he and they're just like <laughs> yeah these shots these shots are all lovely. Was Evil Dead 2 the first modern horror comedy? Other than obviously like Abbott and Costello meet the wolf man. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess there's like different levels of horror comedy because like American Werewolf in London is a horror comedy, but that's like the horror and that is treated seriously. Mm. Do you think Peter Jackson watched this for tips? You know, I remember seeing the two towers in the theater uh-huh. and, and being reminded of Army of Darkness. Yeah. I hear this this little puppet can oh, barely God. stay on the horse. <laughs> I love it. It's just ready to follow. You can see the clearly there are guys in costumes running. But it's like, okay, well, some are in different states of decomposition. Sure. sure but it either should all just be an, an army of, like, zombie men or an army of skeletons. One or the other. Like, then you cut to stuff like this, a miniature with uh, a little stop-motion skeletons. Then the other ones, the ones that in close up are just on, like on tracks, just yeah. in front of the camera. Curly People Pascar. throw ske- skeletons at. They him. don't. They're not articulated. It's nope. someone off camera just throwing a skeleton at him. That makes it funnier. Uh, I remember seeing him on a panel at a convention, and he was. The people, when are you going to do? Every other question is, when are you going to oh, do yeah. more Evil Dead movies? Yeah. And I don't know if it was just his canned response, but he's just like, I'm too old. Yeah. I, it's hard for me to get up in the morning. And he's just like <laughs> making all these excuses. Um, where it just seemed like he didn't want to, and then yeah. that show came out, and I remember thinking, oh. So it's fine. The, the beginning of the show is him strapping himself into a girdle to go out and pick up chicks. <laughs> well, I know Bruce Campbell said in the commentary track for this that he wanted his character to be hiding somewhere for the entire last act. <laughs> 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 I guess that's kind of similar to like uh, Big Trouble in Little China, where half yeah. of the the climax of the movie, uh, Kurt Russell's passed out. You found me beautiful once, honey. You got real ugly. That's another thing they just kind of brush over. Is he just stabbed her through the stomach and threw her off the top of the uh-huh. castle, and then at the end of the movie, she just turns normal again and is alive. Just deal with it. <laughs> makes it funnier when he abandons her so he can go to work at s marks i'm assuming you've both seen the yeah yeah the the original intended ending which do you prefer u.s theatrical cut ending is more entertaining yeah, yeah. the original ending is appropriate for ash as a character yeah 